Macros and key bindings, terrific ways to customize the game and actually make you a more proficient player. Uh, but uh, mostly it's, you know, make you make things more convenient, make the buttons more accessible. So here I am with uh, my fell guard. We'll start off with the simplest of macros, which is the simplest of commands, uh, which are emotes. So, for example, I'm going to select my fell guard. Let's say I just want to wave at the fell guard. So just put a slash, W A V E. And when I hit enter, I'll wave at my fell guard. Hi, fell guard. Let's put that in a macro, all right? If you want to be able to wave to people without having to type it in, so we bring up macros. You press escape, select macros. Now, when you're looking at your macro window, there are two tabs. The tab on the right, which is the one that's currently selected, those macros that you create will only be available to the character that you're on. So we're creating these macros are just for this character for Xena that I'm on right now. On the left, these general macros, you create a macro in that window, and those macros will be available to all your characters. And that includes both sides. If you're on a PvE server and you have characters both Alliance and Horde side, any macros that you create in this tab will be available to all those characters. Of course, if you're on PvP, you can't create characters on both sides, so be only available to the characters on one side, but all your characters. So let's create a new macro for wave. You just click new, up pops this window. It's going to ask you for two things. You need to name the macro. We'll be obvious, we'll name it wave. And you need to select an icon. Now, if I were going to create a spell a, a macro for a spell, I'd leave it selected to question mark and the game would automatically choose the appropriate icon for that spell. But wave isn't a spell, so we need to select an icon for it. So uh, how about this skull and crossbones? Now we're ready to create the macro. We've named it. We've chosen an icon. We click OK. And there's the macro. It's, it's in our window over here, and it's waiting for you to type in the command. The command is slash W-A-V-E. The uh, macros need to be in all lowercase, the macro command. When you actually put in uh, spells, it needs to, be, to match the name of the spell. We'll get to that in a second. All right, so there's our macro for wave. That's all there is to it. How do you use the macro? Well, you take the, the icon, not from here. You take it from here. Left click, drag it to your action bar. Let's uh, put it right there. So there's our skull and crossbones in our action bar. See, when I hover over it, wave pops up there in the bottom right corner to let you know which macro, what you're, what you're hovering over. We'll exit this. Once again, I'll select my fell guard. Now, I don't have to type it in. I just click on it, and I wave at my fell guard. That's the simplest of, uh, of the uh, macros. Okay, let's actually do a macro that you can use for gameplay, uh, for, for, for fighting or something. Oh, well, before I, before I get away from uh, macros for emotes, you notice I've got these other three. Uh, when I'm in the, the battlegrounds and some other, some enemy player is being cute with a bunch of, of macros when they're spitting on or rolling on the floor laughing at some of my teammates, next time I see that player, I'll select him and I'll hit him with this emote. Let me show you how this works. Again, I'll select my fell guard. I have it down here already in my action bar. That's bonk. So I'm going to bonk him on the head. I'm going to tell him I'm, dis I'm, I'm bored with him and I'm disappointed with him. You'd be surprised how effective that is at shutting up other players. All of a sudden they go, oh, uh, apparently I don't know as much about macros as other people. I think I'll quit being so s such a jerk. Uh, okay, enough on emotes. Let's actually create some macros that you can use uh, in gameplay. Now, I, I've created one more thing before we leave this. Uh, I don't want to keep that uh, macro. Uh, we just created it for demonstration. So how do you delete it? You can see there's a delete button down here, but it's shaded. Well, when you hover over it, it becomes active. See that? It, it actually showed a color. So now you left click and be careful because that's all it takes. One click and it's gone. All right. Uh, okay, now some actual gameplay macros. This uh, is my buff macro, and I have it down here in my action bar right there, so when I hover over it, you can see in the bottom right corner, buff comes up. Uh, I go ahead and activate all my buffs with one button. It used to be I had four buttons over here taking up a lot of space in my action bar. This way, I just have one button for all four buffs. Now, you do actually have to click the buff each time. You have to click the same macro. It's not, it's not quite so easy as just hitting the button once and all your buffs activate, and that's because of the global cooldown. So each time you buff, it has a cooldown. It has to wait 
you know, what if it's 1.2 seconds or something like that before you can cast the next, next spell. This is a cast sequence. It's one of the more usable and one of the most common of, uh, and one of the most effective of all the uh, macros, and it's it's pretty sec- it's pretty uh, simple. You just type in, of course, the slash, and then one word, cast sequence, all lowercase, and then a space, and then I put a reset. You're usually going to want to have a reset on a cast sequence. What that does is, if, if I don't go through the entire cast sequence, if I don't cast all those spells, it will reset back to the first spell after a certain time. And the time that I put in, Oh, I hope you can read this. It's a tiny little font. You put reset equals no spaces right here. You put a space, you know, cast sequence, then a space, and then reset, no space between the reset equals and 15. 15 is the number of seconds before it resets, all right? And then a space, and now you do use uppercase and lowercase. You want to type exactly the, the word, the, the, the description of the spell. So first I cast spell armor, comma, space, Detect Invisibility, comma, space, Unending Breath, comma, space, and Soul Link, the uh, the four buffs that I usually use. Now, this is how it works. Uh, now, our, the Soul Link is not something that goes away, so that will stay active. That's why I have it last in the cast sequence. I don't cast it every time, uh, but I, the uh, Fell Armor and the others are on a timer. Now, my Fell Armor is still up. Uh, let's make it go away. There we go. You right-click on on a, a beneficial buff, and it'll go away. So that you can see, when I cast, click on this, fell armor comes up. Click it again, and I've got detective visibility. Click it again. I have unending breath. And if I were to click it again, I would activate the soul link. But soul link is already activated. So watch. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna click it. And in a few seconds, it's gonna go back to the green fell armor icon because I have it that's what I have it set to do there you go it has returned so that now it's ready to go with the first cast the first spell in the cast sequence how about in actual fighting and when you're actually in battle a macro that uh, you could use to cast damaging spells I have one because uh, uh, warlocks know that uh, immolate and incinerate are related to each other. When you uh, cast Incinerate, you do more damage if the enemy, if the uh, target, is already afflicted with Immolate. So you always want to cast Immolate first, so I created a cast sequence, a sequence to do just that. So without having to, to click two different buttons, I can have them on the same button on my uh, uh, action bar, and save space on the action bar, another cast sequence, slash, one word, cast sequence, space, Again, I have the reset set at uh, 15. Now I could, right here, put reset equals target. So that when I select a new target, it resets to the first spell in the cast sequence. I just thought I'd prefer to have it set to a timer. Uh, but uh, a lot of players would, would you want it to reset equals, and then just type in the word target. And then put a space, and there's uh, your sequence of spells. Immolate, comma, space, incinerate, comma, space, Incinerate, comma, space, incinerate. And we'll show you how that works. All right. Come around here to a uh, practiced one of these uh, training dummies. So I don't even I don't have to click. It's in my action bar, so I, all I have to do is press the number four. When I press four the first time, I cast immolate. Now I press that same button again, and now I'm casting incinerate three times in a row. There's one incinerate, two incinerates, three incinerates, and now it resets back to immolate. So were you following down here what the icon was doing? It will change the icon because I have it with the, uh, I set the, the macro with a question mark. The icon will automatically change to whatever spell is next in the cast sequence. But that's a quick demonstration of uh, macros. We'll get to some more macros that other player types might use and to key bindings in the next videos. Look for macros and key bindings two and three. Thanks for watching. Here's wishing you many great kills and great loots.